Hey everyone, this is Neha from Edureka and I welcome you all to the session on file handling in Java. Let's have a look at the agenda for the session. First, I will tell you what is file handling in Java. Next, I will talk about what is stream and also I will tell you what are the different types of stream that are available. And moving further, I'll talk about the various file methods in Java that are necessary to perform various operations on file. And after that, I'll discuss the file operations that is creating a file, getting file information, reading from a file, writing to a file and many more. So I hope you found agenda interesting. Now without wasting any further time, let's get straight into the module. First, let's understand what is file handling in Java. So file handling implies how to read from a file and how to write to a file in Java. And Java basically provides a basic input output package for reading and writing streams. And also Java dot input output package allows you to do all the input and output tasks in Java. So in order to use a file class, you need to create an object of the class and specify the file name or directory name as shown below. So first you will write import Java dot IO dot file that is used to import the file class. And then you have to create the object of a file and specify the file name. Simple. So let me tell you one thing. Java uses the concept of stream to make input and output operations on a file. So let's now understand what is stream in Java. So the stream is a sequence of data. It can be of two types byte stream and character stream. Now talking about the byte stream, it mainly incorporates with byte data. When an input and output process happens with the byte data, then it is called the file handling process with byte stream. Now talking about the character stream, it is a stream which incorporates with characters. When an input and output process happens with a character, then it is called as the file handling process with byte stream. So these are the two types of streams that are available. Now let's move further and have a look at the various file methods that are useful to perform Java file operations. First can read this method is used to test whether the file is readable or not. Next can write this method test whether the file is writable or not. And next you have a create new file which creates an empty file and next delete this command is used to delete the file exist this test whether the file exists or not. And next you have get name which is used to return the name of the file and you have get absolute path and this is used to return the absolute path name of the file and next you have length and it returns the size of the file in bytes. Now moving further you have list this method is used to return the array of the file in a directory and you have mkdir which is used to create a directory. Okay now these methods are used to perform various file operations. Now let's see what are the various file operations that are present in Java. So first you need to create a file. Then once you create a file, you need to get the information out of the file. After that you have to write the information to the file and then you have to read the data from the file. Correct. So now let's understand all these things in a much better way with the help of an example. First create a file. In this case, in order to create a file, you can use the create new file method. Okay, and this method returns true if the file was successfully created and it returns false if the file already exists. Okay. So here is an example for creating a file. So first I have created a package and inside that I have a class called create file. As I have already told you, I need to import the file class. So that is the reason I'm using this package. Okay. And next in order to import the input output exception class to handle the errors. I have Java dot input output dot IO exception. Okay, so next after that I have created a class called create file and inside the main method I'm using two blocks that is try and catch. So inside the try block what I'll do I'll write a code that has to execute and in the catch block. So if there is any error that is going to occur in try block it will be handled. And in this case most expected error can be the IO exception. So that is the reason I'm using a catch block to handle that. Okay, so inside the try block. Let's see what I have written. So I have written file my object is equal to I'm creating a new file in the specified directory. If I don't give the path if I just give the name of the file that is file f1.txt it will by default go and store this file in the location where my eclipse workspace is. 
so I don't want to do that. I want to create a file and a specified file location and that's the reason I'm giving this and now if my obj that is my object dot create new file then if the file is being created with this object then it is telling file created and get the object name that is get name. So get name will be what file fn dot txt right else if the file already exists it will say file already exists. And if there is any exception, it will be handled in the catch block. So now let's run and check the output. So you can see that it's telling file created and it returned the name of the file that is my obj dot get name that is file fn dot txt. Correct. So yes, that's how it works. Now let's cross verify this. I'll go to my D drive. I will go to file handling and you can see and you can see file fn created. Correct. So in this location itself, I have created the file. So if I run this program one more time, so let's see what happens. So it's telling file already exists because one time you created a file, it will be present in that particular location. So it will say file already exists. All right, so this is how you need to create a file. So the next step is to get the file information. So here again, I'm importing the file class and then I'm creating a class called file information and inside the main method I'm creating a new file. Okay, and I will check if this already exists then it should print the file name get file name that is my obj dot get name and then it should again print the absolute path of the file and for that I'm using get absolute path method and then I'm using if it is writable it will print can write if the file is readable it will say can read and the file size and bytes will be my obj dot length. Okay. Else if the file does not exist, then it will print file does not exist. So you can see that I have used all the methods that I have explained to you before that is get name get absolute path can read write and length, right? So let's run the program and check for the output. So you can see that the file name is file1.txt the absolute path is it's in this location that I have already showed you just now for writable and readable it's telling true because yeah it is readable and writable and the file size and bytes is zero. So I have one more file here. Let me show you that I have a file called new file1.txt okay. So inside that I have written some text. So it means it consists of a text right. So when I say the file size in byte, it has to return the length, but here it is telling zero because I have not written anything into that file. So now if I change the file name, let's see what it will return for the statement. Let me run and check it once again. So you can see that it returned the file name absolute path. It is readable and writable and the file size in bytes is 52. Correct. So if you have written anything in the file, then it will return the file size or else it will not simple. So this is how you need to get the file information. Next, let's see how to write to a file. So here I have created a class called write to file and inside the main method again, I have two blocks that is try and catch and here I'm using the my writer method. So here I have used the file writer class together with its write method to write some text into the file. Let's now understand how actually it works. So I have used a file writer and I've created an object of the writer and this is a path where I have saved my file and this is where I want to write some data into the file, right? Then I'm using my writers write method to write this particular context in the file and after that I have to close it. So once I close this, I will say successfully wrote to the file. Okay, if the data has been written into the file, then it will say I have successfully written the data into the file else it will throw an error and will be handled in the catch block. Let's now run and check the output. So it's turning successfully wrote to the file. Now let's cross check this. So you can see that it has written the data into the file that is Java is a prominent programming language of the millennium. If you want to do any editing over here, you can do which means it is writable. And if I want to read the data from the file, I can read it as well, right? Correct. See? So simple. 
it will even ask whether to save or not if I say save yes, it will get saved. Very simple, right? So that's how you need to write a data to the file. Now that you have written the data to the file, you know that you can go to the particular file location and check whether the data has been written into the file or not. But how does Java know that, right? So now let's write a Java program to read the data that you have written into the file. Again, I'll create a class called read from file and inside the main method, I will write file my obj is equal to new file and this is a part of my file and then i'm using scanner and my reader why right? because i want to read it that is the reason and i'll pass the parameter as my obj my obj refers to the file which is this one right and next while my reader dot has next line so if it has next line or if there is n number of data that is being present in that it will read everything so that is the reason i want to check whether it has a next line if yes Again, string data is equal to my reader dot next line and it will print the data and after everything it says my reader dot close because I have to close this and finally if the file has not found then it will throw an error and will be handled in the catch block simple. Now let's run and check the output. So you can see that it returned Java as a prominent programming language of the millennium which I had written from this thing right. So from the right method. And this I manually type so it will again print the data that has been present. So this is how you need to read the data from the file. I hope you understood how to create a file, how to get the information from the file, how to write to a file and how to read from a file. So these are the various file operations that you can perform on a file. So that's how it works and that was all about the file operations. With this we come to an end of the session on file handling in Java. If you have any queries you can comment in the comment section below and we will reply back to you at the earliest. Thank you for attending the session and happy learning.